Hi there. Welcome to the Schwoben's Nest. My name is Sandra, and I'm so glad you're here. This video is sponsored by Xtool. They're having a Father's Day exclusive offer, and I'll tell you more about that later. My first project today for Timber Tuesday is this USA Shapes. Now, this came from Creative Fabrica, and it was a laser cut set that I downloaded and I used my Xtool M1 to cut out all of the pieces. The bottom piece is framed in red there and I just did that with a red magic marker and for the next piece I'm just using my white chalk paint and I'm just going to give one good coat to the top. I'm going to be using markers to color in all of these small little bitty pieces. The first one is the blue square that will have the stars on it. And these are just some markers that I picked up at my dollar store for now. I just wanted to see how they worked. So far, so good. Whether they'll last too much longer, I'm not sure. But I'm going to go ahead and finish this one up. And then all of those little flats that you see will be red because those will be the red stripes of the flat. The M1 machine that I have is a desktop. It sits right next to my desk, literally in my craft room, and it has a hose that can vent to the outside. So I'm able to do all of my cutting indoors. Look at these tiny little stars. It did such a good job cutting these out. And this is from three millimeter basswood. I put these on a piece of tape and I'm just coloring them or actually painting them white. While I wait for all of my pieces to dry, I'm working on this little wooden house that I got at the Dollar Tree, and I'm trying to pull off this buffalo check fabric. When I first saw these, I thought, wow, they're so cute. But then when I got them home, they have the fabric on them and they're not really centered properly. And then they have another piece that's right on top. These are really tough to get off, but I just worked really slowly and just pulled and pulled and eventually I was able to pop it off. I sanded it down a little bit and now I'm going to give it a coat of this Pioneer Red chalk paint just to camouflage some of the texture that's still on this piece. This will be the back of it and I'll be using the back as the front. I'm going to start assembling everything together and I'm just using a small brush to apply some wood glue. Both of these shapes look very similar, but the one with the red border is slightly larger and that gives it a nice framed look. I really love that part of these. That's why all of my craft kits that you see on Etsy, if you haven't checked out my Etsy shop, you can go ahead and click the link down in my description box. I like to do this outlined effect on all of my pieces as well. So it's time for the puzzle, trying to get all of these red stripes for the flag in the right spot. And the pieces that are going on top of the white will not be a little bit smaller. They're going to go right out to the edge of the white shape. So here I'm just trying to figure out where everything is going to go. And once I have it laid out, then I'll start gluing it down. Another reason I wanted to use wood glue for this is that I have a little bit more working time, probably three to four minutes before the glue starts to really set up and grab a hold of the adjoining pieces. With hot glue, you're basically putting it down and then it's stuck there and then you'd have to pull it off and possibly wreck your pieces if you needed to change the positioning. Once the red was dry on the back of this house, I painted the front of it white and then the sides and the top are in this sort of navy blue color. And now I decided to just do sort of a little scallop edge on the top of the house just to give it more of a festive look. I also drew a small blue border all the way around the sides and the bottom of the house. And now I'm going to go ahead and glue on my little American flag in the shape of the United States of America right at the bottom of the house. I'm going to write the word home in it. I'm going to freehand it just with my markers, add a few more little embellishments, and this one is finished.
Let's take a closer look at the Father's Day exclusive offer from Xtool. Right now, you can enjoy a straight 20% discount. You can save more by getting a discount code, and you can get 30% off on Father's Day collections. The Xtool M1 desktop laser and blade cutting machine is what I have. I love this machine. I had tried using some others before. They didn't work out. The first thing that you notice about this one is you don't have to put anything together. It comes fully assembled right out of the box. Right now, the M1 is on sale. You can save up to $853 if you purchase now. You'll also get free shipping to Canada and the U.S. This is the first hybrid laser and blade cutting machine, which means it will cut, engrave, and score on wood, and it will also cut paper, vinyl. The M1 is two machines in one. I'll have all the information down in my description box, and you don't have to be a dad to take advantage of the Father's Day sale. For the second laser cut project that I have today, I decided to do some summer coasters. Now, these are all cut out with an outline, and then there's a design that's going to be on top. Again, I'm just taking some magic markers, and I'm going to just go ahead and color everything in. I'm doing a few different shades. I'm kind of sticking with the theme of my back deck, which is kind of greens and yellows and blues, turquoise, those really fun summer colors. So I'll just continue coloring these in. And then in a second, I'll show you what they look like. For some of them, I thought it would be fun to have sort of a blend of different colors. You can see the fish shape is a dark blue, but I also added some green on top and it turned into this really fun color. So what I'm doing here for the sand dollar is just adding a little bit of a darker blue to the outside. And I really like how these look just with the wood on top, but then I ended up going a little step further and coloring all of the tops in as well. I'm using wood glue and that little paintbrush again because I've got some small and narrow areas. And then some of them I did have to clamp together to make sure that they stayed put while the glue had a chance to dry. I love how these turned out. I think they're really fun. And if you didn't want to do these types of colors, you could definitely do a more rustic look, even more of a farmhouse look. Just using maybe some brown wax or black wax, making them be a little bit more old fashioned, or you could even go with some different colors. Maybe greens and yellows and blues aren't your style. Maybe you want to do some pinks and purples. I think these would look amazing with any colors on them. I'm going to be putting a coat of Mod Podge, actually two coats of Mod Podge to seal all the paint in, and then these will be ready for outdoor use. If you've been with me for a while, you know that I like to repurpose things rather than starting from scratch or ditching something that I don't like. So what I'm going to do is just take some white chalk paint and cover up the wording on this sign. I am going to leave the Serenity Blue from Rust-Oleum. That's on the frame itself and it's dry brushed with white. I love that look. So what I want to do here is just give the inside a fresh look. I'm using a dark blue marker to actually color in just the top part of a flip flop. I'm going to do both of them this color, but I'm going to leave the bottom portion of the flip flop just the wood color because I like that look. I used wood glue to glue the band onto the wood flip flop and now I'm using wood glue again, but I think for this I could have used hot glue. It would have worked out just fine. 
I wanted to put some wording on this sign and I've got a piece of green painter's tape there just to make sure that I stay straight. And I'm just going to use this stencil that I got from the dollar store. I'm just going to use my pencil, trace everything out, and then I'll use a black marker to fill everything in. I'm going to write in decks, docks, and flip-flops. I thought that was perfect for our cottage because we have a deck, we have a dock, and I'm always wearing flip-flops. To add a little bit more of a dimension or an accent, I'm just taking my black marker and just tracing around the inside of the frame. I think that just made everything pop a little bit and all the colors are kind of working together now. I love how this sign turned out and I hope you like it too. Thanks so much for spending some of your time with me today. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to hit that like button, the notification bell, and the subscribe button if you haven't already. If you like this video, here's a couple more that might interest you. Bye for now.